Hi, I'm Chris Blackman, Chief Channel Officer at JS Group and co-chair of the Allies of the Channel Council. This is a channel partners initiative that is dedicated to advocating for diversity, equity, and inclusion in the channel. And I'm joined here today by my fellow council member, Nancy Ridge, president and founder of Ridge Innovative and co-founder of Alliance of Channel Women. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Chris. Thank you for asking me to join you today. Well, I'm excited about our conversation. You know, we have talked about just trying to have this conversation a little bit more publicly. So we thought that we'd record a quick interview and get it up on social and start a dialogue. That's great. I think the more dialogues that we can foster, the better off we'll be in this quest for DE&I. So let's just dive right in. We're going to talk about, obviously, um, women in the channel today mm -hmm, and talking mm -hmm. about gender diversity and some different kind of systemic gender biases that we encounter um, regularly. So women in the channel, we have come a long way in the last few years, and we're more represented in positions of leadership today than we ever have been before. But where do we still have work to do? And I want to agree with you and acknowledge those leaders in the channel who have helped to create progress because we definitely have seen progress and certainly awareness and you know thank you to everybody who continues to raise the awareness, including our ACC Council, and I think there is plenty more work to do and uh, I fortunately it's not anything new. In many respects, it's a lot of the same issues that we were looking at way back in 2010 when Alliance of Channel Women was first formed. And part of that uh, comes from the standpoint of, I think, women just continuing to find each other and collaborate and know that it's okay to do that, that we don't have to be in head to head competition all the time, that there are lots of ways that we can grow our businesses together through collaboration. So you know, we talk a lot these days about breaking down silos within organizations, but I think also across ecosystems, silos can be broken down. And anytime you have a, a women's group or um, a place where women have a chance to come together and talk about their businesses openly, I think that fosters that, that growth and that ability for us to elevate each other, as I like to say. That's one of the things I love so much about Alliance of Channel Women and why I encourage every young woman that I mentor in this industry to join it and to get involved is because I've never, I don't think, been a part of another peer group that lifts each other up so much. It's like the boundaries of competition and like you said, different organizations and all of that just disappear when you walk into mm -hmm. one of these meetups or have one of these committee conversations. Yeah, I'm thrilled. It's, it's our foundational principle. Another one that you mentioned a moment ago was mentorship. And I think that continues to be a way that we can really uh, lift each other up and bring more uh, women into the channel because it's important for younger women to see a career in the channel as being an attractive option. Let's face it, most of us when asked say, oh, this wasn't my career plan. You know, we kind of fell into it, but why not make it a career plan? It's a great career. Uh, I recently got invited to participate on the board of a nonprofit called Aspire to Steam. And it was founded by Cheryl O'Donohue. And I'm really just amazed at what her vision was for that and getting behind that, which really brings into focus that not only do we wanna help our best and our brightest young people, young women choose careers in science, engineering, technology, the arts, um, et cetera, but we also want to reach out to those who are underprivileged and that's what Aspire to STEAM does. So it reaches out to not only young women who may be at the high school or college level, but also young women who may be at the beginning of their careers and they're struggling with all these challenges and barriers that women face and they need support, not only for schools, we provide scholarships, but also mentoring and ACW has been a big participant to support that group too. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up. We've had a conversation recently about how, you know, yes, we're seeing more women in the channel, we're seeing more women in leadership positions, but um, by and large, what I'm seeing is women in marketing, in sales. It's rare for you to see, um, or it's still rarer to see women mm -hmm. than men in positions mm -hmm. that are technical in nature. 
And so when we talk about fostering that STEM development, that um, study in relation to computer sciences and technology in young women, I think it's important because not only do I not see a ton of females in technical roles, but because a whole lot of partners start their business because of a love of technology, not necessarily that they want to own a small business, right. but they want to do something with technology. So I don't see as many partners, as many uh, women-owned businesses as MSPs or as you know VARs um, as I do in the vendor organizations. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and I think, um, you know, there's ways that we can continue to support women to go into those arenas, not only getting them at the start, at the early part of their careers to say, you know, you can do this, but also just to remove some of those other barriers that exist that kind of hold women back from taking that risk of moving into a male dominated environment. Um, or, or even, you know, and I know you wanted to talk about this a little bit too, there's, you know, there are internal and external barriers that we face. And we've been kind of talking about some of the, uh, I would say, external barriers. And, and those also include things like um, the fact that women are, are still very much, in many cases, the primary breadwinner. And they also are the primary caregivers in their families. And so that really minimizes the, the appetite, if you will, to stretch into those more technical fields, to stretch into business ownership, which goes beyond a love of tech, um, into running a business, entrepreneurship, and that big, scary one, sales. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm glad that you brought that up because one of the things that we've been talking about in the ACC with the ACW with groups like Exposure is how much more impacted, disproportionately impacted women have been than men when it mm -hmm. comes to the economic fallout of the pandemic. Yes. It, just, it blows my mind, which is the, the story that we've been talking about for the last several months. And December, there was a net loss of like 140,000 jobs and they were all by women. Right. Yes. And, you know, as the studies have gone deeper and McKinsey did a pretty extensive one, you know, taking a look into this that is fairly recent, you know, the <clears throat> a couple of things they found. One was uh, disproportionately women also do a lot of the part-time work. Mm -hmm. in the economy. And of course, you know, again, that usually has to do with the family management responsibilities that they have, the reason why they're doing part-time work, mm -hmm. you know, but the other issue, the number one issue, hands down, was intervention in the area of child care. And, and, you know, if you go beyond that as well, it's not just child care, but it's also caring for elderly parents, right. you know, um, it's that whole caregiver thing. But there is some bright news this week and I was excited to talk to you about this because I listened to a press conference the other day with Gina uh, Raimondo, who's our new Secretary of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And they, she stated that a big part of the proposed jobs plan is funding what they call the care economy. Mm -hmm. And you know the numbers are huge, it's like 400 billion. And 25 billion of that is to upgrade childcare facilities and increase the number of facilities in underserved areas. So, you know, these are some of the solutions, like we need help on a large scale. It can't just be, you know, oh yes, that's a problem. And, you know, we have to empathize. It's good to empathize, but we need some hardcore solutions and some real money addressing the fact that this care economy can't be supported by women in the channel <laughs> while we're also trying to fund, uh, uh, found and run tech companies. Right. Um, it's wonderful to see some of these deeply ingrained systemic issues, like what you're just talking about being addressed by actual policy. To your point, instead of it just being you know, a Band-Aid or yeah. empty talk, to actually see some policy changes being implemented around it. I think that's really encouraging. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully that will start to take root within, you know, the culture of companies as well, of organizations as, you know, and I think part of that is the equality part of the DE&I 
because it's one thing to, and I think a lot of our businesses and tech and certainly in our channel have made commitments to put more women in leadership roles, but once they get there, they need an equal opportunity to be successful. And so recognizing that, you know, maybe making changes within the corporate culture to support that, whether it's flexible hours or, you know, in some sort of incentive or acknowledgement to cover cost of childcare, um, you know, just being concrete in that support to make sure that the playing field is level. Yes, yes, that's it exactly. And you have been going through, if I'm not mistaken, the process of actually becoming certified as a woman-owned business. Is, can I have that right? Yes, absolutely. So I'm excited to um, be taking that step to apply with the uh, WBENC, the Women Business Enterprise National Coalition. Got it down. <laughs> We're, good at acronyms. Good job. We're good at acronyms in the channel. That's one thing, right? <laughs> But essentially, you know, there is a certification process and it's wonderful because not only uh, does it give us uh, as women owned businesses some resources and opportunities to bid on uh, deals that we wouldn't normally have access to, but the, the really, I would say, breakthrough thing we're seeing is that many, many enterprises, almost all the major enterprises now have um, DE&I or supplier diversity uh, representatives and teams in their procurement areas and across the board. And so being a part of uh, WBENC gives you access to that community where you can actually network with them and get in front of them. And they have, uh, whether it's mandated through some sort of compliance or many corporate cultures now are creating their own metrics for bringing diversity into their supplier chain. So it gives you access to those people and um, through some of the women that I've met through the Alliance of Channel Women uh, created a new group called the Power Women Alliance. And it's, it's an ecosystem designed, a little ecosystem that we created to allow us who work in different aspects of solving the complex problems that companies face um, and optimizing their spend and mitigating their risk and maximizing their efficiencies. We come at it from different perspectives and we, we're coming in collectively to these uh, supplier diversity reps and saying, you can, you can empower four in one <laughs> by working with the PWA. You know, when we have a chance to combine our powers and use them for good, it's amazing what we can do, right? <laughs> Superpowers. <laughs> Where can people go to learn more about that organization? There is uh, soon to be a website, but for now at ridgeinnovative.com, um, I do have a podcast, which by the way is called Culture of Innovation. It's on awesome. SoundCloud and on iTunes. And we just recorded um, a podcast with the PWA. So you can learn all about it listening to the podcast. Great. Well, let's see. We've talked about the PWA. We've talked about Alliance of the Channel Council. We've talked about um, Alliance of Channel Women. Are there any other organizations? I guess we would be remiss to not mention exposure, inclusion, and diversity. Absolutely. Council, yeah. And all the work that they're doing over there. Well, you know, I want to take a moment a little bit we have just a couple minutes left just to dwell on uh, the council for a second, because I think it is so important for everyone in the channel to get behind it because it doesn't just address uh, gender diversity, but, you know, the council is going across the board. Um, we're looking at, you know, racial, uh, we're looking at supporting the, the various uh, aspects, whether it's racial, whether it's LG, LGBTQ, um, you know, whether it's ageism, I mean, we're really looking across the board and with, you know, current, we continue to have these challenges in our society, you know, just lately, we're trying to put the focus on stopping Asian hate, you know, so it's a much broader coalition that I think is really important because let's face it, we're all in this ecosystem together. So one of the other things that I love about the ACC, very similar to ACW, it's a, it's a really broad coalition of vendors, partners, 
we've got people from distribution, we've got people from um, consultancies and analysts. And so it's just a really broad and diverse range of, um, of opinions and viewpoints. And I find that the more we're able to diversify the voices, then the better our solutions are, the more creative we get in our approaches. It's one of the things that I really love the most about the ACC. And Me we're too. always looking for new members. Yes, yes. And by the way, thank you for being a catalyst for that, Chris, because you really were the catalyst to get that off the ground uh, last year in 2020 when we were all hurting and looking for something to do. And so I really appreciate your vision. Well, it was very easy to do with the support of channel partners and all of the wonderful initiatives that they have going on over there. They've got a new community group that they're starting around DE&I um, and, you know, dedicated blogs and the new website and the new website. Yeah. So, um, you know, they've got so much great energy and such a wonderful team over there doing so much that the ACC was a, an easy lift with all of that support. Well, you know, when I have my down days, you know, feeling, you know, the pressure of, all the various challenges that are occurring, not just in our channel, but in our society at large, it feels good to be involved in something like the council. So, you know, for anyone who might be listening, who's never had an experience like that, you know, please join because, you know, when I believe taking action is the antidote to uh, any sort of anxiety or, you know, depression we might feel, or even frustration, you know, that's the antidote. Get in there, you know, let's yeah. help. It's our ecosystem. It's up to us to keep it healthy. That's right. Ours, nobody's going to do it besides us. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to learn more about the Allies of the Channel Council, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or any of our council members or head on over to channelfutures.com and check out the new website and the diversity, equity, and inclusion sections right. that they've got there and find more information. Nancy, thanks so much for talking to me today. Thanks for having me, Chris. It was great.